Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode number 53 of the WP Cafe show with just me, Mark Wilkinson. I'm your host today. Uh, other regular host, Keith, is busy today with housey work. For those listening in previous episodes, we know he's been building a house and uh, it's kind of got to that stage where lots of things need to be done. Uh, so he is not with us today. So you've just got um, little old me on my own. And um, in today's episode, what I thought we could do is have a little chat about the software that I use on a daily basis. What sort of programs do I use? Maybe it'll be interesting to you to compare it with your sort of tech stack that you use. Uh, maybe you can find some interesting tidbits of things that I do and use. And if um, you've got any comments on that, I'd love to know because I'd love to learn about what I'm missing out on and stuff and so forth like that. So that's us. As always, if you are watching along on YouTube, please let us know in the comments who you are, where you're from. And as always, if you have any questions about this stuff, I would love you to ask them um, primarily because I'm on my own and I'm going to have to talk for a while. So if you've got anything to say, I'd love to hear it. We can have a little um, uh, questions and answers as well, which would be would be great. Um, the usual housekeeping before I get started, if you haven't already subscribed, please consider doing so to the High Rise channel for all episodes of WP Cafe and obviously other WordPress related content as well. We are rapidly closing in on 2000 subscribers, which is amazing. So thank you very much for everyone for listening to the shows, listening to the content. It is greatly appreciated. And if you enjoy this, please give it a like. It really does help. So let's get started then with episode 53, software that I am using on a regular basis. Now, I'm going to split this into a couple of different sections, and I'm actually going to start off with kind of the non developer software, so there's just the general stuff that I use and quite enjoy and like, and then we'll go into some of the stuff that I use for like coding and development and things like that afterwards, um, and you might be able to uh, give me some tips of the stuff that I'm not using that might be really beneficial to me. Um, hi to Tony. Hi to Joel. Thank you for joining us. Um, so let's get started with the non-developer software. Now, a while ago, um, I used to have a notepad. I'd be lying if I said I didn't have a notepad. I still have one on the desk here. I have one all the time just to take notes, whether it's on calls, whether it's chatting with Keith, uh, jot jotting stuff down. But I've tried as much as possible in the last 12 months to, uh, instead of writing them in a notepad, is to actually get them in digital format so that we can search them and we can look back at them and make it much more easy to find stuff that we've talked about and then uh, document it. So to do that, I've actually been using the Notes app on Apple uh, on the Mac, um, and it syncs across devices and, and different uh, machines, which is great. And I've really enjoyed using it. It's nice and easy to use. It is, allows you to tag your different notes. It allows you to put them in folders. Um, so I've really enjoyed it. That's the Notes app for Mac. I'm not sure whether Windows have something that is along the same lines, but certainly I would be surprised if they don't. Um, and it's been really good. It's helped a lot when I think about, oh, what did we chat about with client? Uh, let's go back and check my notes. And then instead of fiddling through a notepad of notes that I can barely understand what I've written, I can actually just find it really easy by the search, which is really excellent in the Notes app. So that's something that has been really positive. And I've actually taken that over into my sort of personal life as well and started scanning documents that get sent through the post rather than having to put them in a filing cabinet. And that has really helped. So the Notes app has been really positive for me. How do you take your notes? Do you still use a notepad? Are you, are you on something a bit more sophisticated? Be interested um, to see in the comments what you do. Now, the next one is something we've used for years and something you probably use as well, and it's the project management tool of choice, and that is Trello. Um, so we use Trello. We've used it from ever since we started High Rise Digital. If you're not sure what Trello is, it's kind of a Kanban approach to project management where you've got uh, lists, uh, and in, in, in those lists go different tasks, which on Trello are called cards. And essentially, a card moves its journey in our boards from left to right, from sort of its starting point as the task, all the way through to finished and testing and so forth like that. It works really well, and it's free. We don't pay for Trello. We're not on a paid plan or anything. We're on the free version. We, we used to be on the paid plan when we were a smaller team, when we had three or four people here. Um, I can't remember whether that was necessary to have those people or we used some of the extra features. But since we've scaled back High Rise Digital to just myself and Keith, we're on the free plan. We have a team or a, a, in there, High Rise Digital team, and we have several boards for various different things, board each for the products that we run, 
we have a board each for the clients that we have the maintenance contracts on. And actually, the clients own those boards, so they're not part of our setup. We get them to create their own board, and then we copy in our boilerplate setup um, so that we can work on that. And basically, just make us an admin of the board. It just means that uh, they're in control of that board. So should the relationship with High Rise Digital uh, end in the future, they can still keep their own board, and it's theirs to work with in the future. Um, clients love it. They really like Trello. Most of our clients really get into it quickly. They quickly get to the point where they're not sending us an email. They're adding a Trello card for us to deal with. And uh, yeah, everyone really likes it and it works really well. So Trello is a big plus. If you're looking for something for project management that is not complicated at all, then Trello is is, is a real good one. There is one thing on Trello that I really wish could be done, maybe you can, and someone in the comments is going to say, hey, Mark, you can do it and you do it like this. You can uh, send um, comments to a Trello card with an email address. So each card you set up has uh, like a random email address. And if you email that card, that email address, it will appear on the card as a comment. And what I often do is CC emails um, into that card email address so that a conversation with a client over email um, can, can happen, particularly for products and things like that, can be put onto the board. But the problem is if they don't hit reply all, the reply doesn't end up on the card. And what I'd love something would, would be to, to fix that problem, like to consistently make sure that that's in the reply. But maybe maybe that's asking too much, but that would be good. So, yes, Trello, um, that's a staple of every day. It's open every day. It's probably open now if I check my tabs in, in uh, Chrome. Yep, there it is with one of the projects we've got open. Uh, and it's used all of the time. So uh, Trello, definitely good one. What do you use for project management? I'd love to know. Um, there are some quite sophisticated systems out there. My experience of most of them is that it has been um, quite complicated to use, et cetera. So I haven't uh, used them. I've stuck to Trello, finding it um, finding it much better and easier to use. Um, next one is Slack. Um, this is for team communications. Team, I say team communications. It's essentially communicating with me and Keith. And up until about two or three weeks ago, we had a paid for version. And we've actually downgraded it to a free version. Um, we don't really need the paid version. We don't use the features that it offers. And we don't really need the long history of uh, messages that it provides. I can't really think of an example of when we've used and looked back at those. So I think that the free version is going to be absolutely fine just for that instant communication when you're on a project and you need to ask questions, etc. It works really well. Um, each project in Slack has its own channel and the, ch the, the chat about that particular thing goes into that channel, etc. So not particularly um, complicated use case, but it is still something that we need. Something that we're using less and less of, we have considered like just can we do this over, you know, iMessage, for example, or something like that. Um, but we've never really moved away from Slack. It does seem to serve a good purpose for us. So we've stuck with it for now, but back to the free version. Um, I'm sure that you all use Slack as well, so I'm sure you know how it works. Um, the next one on my list is uh, Airmail, which is a small app for the Mac, which is my email client. I am still old school. I like to have a client on my machine that pulls in my email. A um, couple of reasons. I like the features of those software. Airmail is nice and simple to use. It's quite Mac native. It looks and feels um, native, which is good. And uh, I also pull in multiple accounts into the same app so that I can see all of my emails from personal emails to work emails to different emails from the products we have, et cetera. They're all coming to the same inbox um, and I can see everything in one go rather than having to keep checking several um, different email, email providers. We use Gmail as the provider for our email, so they all come into there anyway. Um, and email is quite, quite good. It, the search isn't particularly wonderful. I tend to sometimes jump on the web to do, do a detailed search of something to look back on. But other than that, still like email and still have it installed. Um, hi to Tony again. Tony's just put a comment on here. I use Trello or Notes, but I still have a pen and paper for daily to-dos and a whiteboard, if only, to list leads and not state they're in. I try to put ESPO CRM to good use. CRM, that's an interesting one, something me and Keith have been chatting about recently, whether to sort of go for a CRM. We don't really have one. Um, but yeah, I don't think pen and paper on my desk will ever be replaced, but I'm trying as much as I can to get the important stuff uh, digitized. So thanks for that comment, Tony. 
So after airmail, I've got a couple of uh, pieces of software that are kind of important. The first is ScreenFlow, which is an app I use for recording my screen. So if I'm doing a YouTube video where I want to screen cast some code and, and obviously the stuff like that, I use ScreenFlow. It also has very, I'd say very basic. It probably can do a lot. I only use it for the very basic stuff, video editing capabilities. So it allows you to cut clips up and things like that. I'm sure it does a lot more for the more experienced editors, but for my level of video editing, it's nice and easy to use, easy to understand, delivers really good results as well. Um, and any videos that you've seen on the High Rise Digital YouTube channel that have included screen capture, that's what I've used to do it, is using screen flow. Um, so something, something to have a look at there. And then last but not least in the list of non-developer stuff, is software called StreamYard, which is what we're using right now to deliver this podcast live on YouTube and on Twitter. Uh, StreamYard is a piece of software that runs in the browser, which is lovely, and it allows you to stream out to those different destinations. Really easy to use. I can see all your comments coming into the StreamYard Sys software, so I don't have to look on, on YouTube and Twitter, etc. cetera. Um, it's really quite good. So uh, we used to use a different one. I can't remember what it's called now. E Ecamm, was it Ecamm Studio or something? Like I can't remember his name. And then someone was using this. I think it was the guys and girls from WP London Meetup. They used StreamYard and recommended it. And then we gave it a go. And uh, yeah, it definitely was the one for us. So StreamYard is what we use for these shows and how we put them together. So that's the list of non developer -y sort of software. Let's go and have a look at some of the pieces of software that I use in my everyday development tasks. So the first one is my code editor, which is now Visual Studio Code and has been for, I would imagine, around 12 months. Um, I'd like to give you the reason why I used it, but I think the honest answer is I was just jumping on the bandwagon because everybody else was using it. I used to use, um, what was it called? I can't remember what it was called now. It was the popular one at the time. Uh, it escapes me. Um, and to be honest, it's very similar to Visual Studio Code. I think the visuals are a little bit nicer on Visual Studio Code, just looks a little bit more modern. Um, but it, it kind of does the job for me. I probably use 1% of its features. I'm pretty old school simply when I use a code editor. I do have a few, um, whatever they're called, add-ons or, or plugins or extensions, I think they're called in Visual Studio Code. So I have one called Auto Close Tag. Does what it says on the tin. If you open a div, it'll close it for you automatically. Um, auto rename tag. So if I rename the first part of a, a, a an element, it'll automatically do the closing bit as well for me. So I don't need to worry about that, which is nice. And um, something we mentioned in last week's episode, I think it was the GitHub Code Pilot, which is something new that I'm trying. So this is some AI for your coding, and I have to say I've been so impressed with that. I was kind of skeptical at the start that it wouldn't really help me, but it has been such a help. And once you get used to it and how you can actually use it to its full potential, which by no means I'm saying I am, it is actually very useful. So a really good example of that was uh, last was it last week or earlier this week. I was writing some JavaScript. Yeah, I oh know JavaScript. I don't write much JavaScript, but I was writing some JavaScript, and it was all on whether doing some different things when a checkbox was checked or when it was unchecked. So essentially, it had an if else statement. If checked, else do something else. And I wrote the if is checked, and I think it was setting some attributes on different um, elements on the page when the button was checked. And it automatically completed the else bit by doing the opposite of the checked. And it was absolutely perfect. I looked at the code and thought, that's exactly what I wanted it to do. Um, and I'm not talking, you know, 400 lines of code. I'm talking about 20 lines of code. But it understood exactly what I wanted to do. It even commented the, the, the code it wrote in the same way that I'd commented my code, explaining what it meant. Um, so if you've not tried it, I would highly give it a go. It is free for a month, so do give GitHub Pilot a go. It is um, definitely something I'm going to be using more in the future as I get to know it. Um, it's very good as well. If you type a comment, it will suggest something, the code that you're trying to write, um, which is kind of handy. And it, it it seems to learn as well over time what you want to do. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. I don't know, but that's it's pretty good. Um, other extensions I've got, I've got an SFTP extension. So if I need to connect to a server via SFTP, just have a look at some files, pull some files down. Don't often do that, uh, but that's in there as well. 
and then I've got PHP IntelliFence installed. I actually can't remember that's for. I assume that's for suggesting functions um, when you've got a project set up. I think it is. So you'll you'll write uh, a function and it'll tell you what the parameters are, et cetera, et cetera, um, which can be handy as well. So that's what that was for, um, which I um, take advantage of sometimes rather than having to look into the core, like what it's what the parameters for a function are. It'll tell you straight away because it's looked it up and it knows, which is quite handy. So that's it. Probably very basic. I don't have any other extensions. What am I missing out on? If you're a Visual Studio Code user, let me know in the comments what um, extensions you use. Is there anything else that is like super duper good that I don't use and would really benefit from? So that's my code editor. Um, the next little piece of software on my list that is, it's actually a software I used about two years ago and then I stopped using and then I wanted to do something a few weeks ago and installed it again. And it's called Tinkerwell. And it's a little piece of software that essentially allows you to run PHP in the software. So rather than having to write it in your Visual Studio Code or your code editor, saving it and then going into your browser to be able to see what the output of that code would be, you can literally just write it in Tinkerwell and it'll tell you what is, comes out the other side. So I do it a lot for things like um, you know, var dumping variables or things like that, and it'll tell you what whether it's you know true or false, or whether it's an error, something like that. It's a really quick way of being able to see what's going on in your code. Um, and I'm probably a lot of people saying you don't use anything in Visual Studio Code like debugger, and the answer to that is no, because I find it too complicated. I've never been able to set it up. I'm still an old school var dump. Let's have a look at what's there and um, work it out from there. If I could get those things working. Um, without spending three weeks on them, I would probably give it a go, but they've been a bit too difficult for me. So Tinkerwell, um, that's one that is um, pretty useful if you haven't had a look at it. Um, ben, thank you, Ben, for joining us, says, um, Thunder Client is very good and pretty much Postman in VS Code. Now, that is interesting because I use Postman all the time. It's actually the next one on my list. Um, I'll come to that in a second. Um, and if that could be inside VS Code, that might be very useful. So something I will definitely have a look at. Thank you, Ben. And then Joseph, thank you for joining us. Joseph says, you can add WordPress to the functions in Telefence understands. You can add WordPress to the functions in Telefence understands too. Um, you can add WordPress to the functions in Telefence understands too. I'm presuming that's meaning adding WordPress functions so that it understands those, um, which I believe it already does, unless I've missed the understanding there. Um, it will do that. Thank you for getting involved. So the next one on my list, as uh, we've already mentioned, is Postman. Now, we with our product job relay, we do a lot of posting data to uh, different websites, need to see what comes back, whether there's any errors, whether it's given the right messages, etc. So it's certainly something that we use a lot. Um, and that is something that I've got a lot of the stuff set up on, testing things out, working with APIs. So if, you, if you're using APIs, Postman is really good. It allows you to sort of send that data across. And again, if that's now inside VS Code, like Ben says, that might be something to look at. But certainly, if you work with APIs, Postman is kind of a must. So definitely take a look at that. I think it's still free, um, getpostman.com, I think it might be. But if you just search for Postman, um, you'll, you will find that uh, that little app is certainly worth doing. Um, Tony says, um, VS Code with PHPCS to check against coding standards. Um, I used to have that set up. I think that might have been in my other uh, code editor, and it then broke. Um, that's probably the reason I moved to Visual Studio as well, actually, because someone said it was easy to set up. Um, I still haven't managed to set it up. Um, I still couldn't get it working to check my code and, and check against the WordPress coding standards. So, yeah, um, I'd love to get that working, but up until that, I haven't been able to get that going. Um, next on my list is FileZilla. Um Something I use occasionally, I mentioned the SFTP add-on for um, Visual Studio Code. So I use kind of interchange those two really when I need to SFTP to a site, see what's going on. So that's something I use, dead straightforward to use and uh, really easy. Um, Tony says that PHPCS and is fiddly to set up. It certainly was, um, Tony. I, I couldn't get it working and um, the time it was taking for me to get it working was just not worth the effort, to be honest. Um, the, the, the those sorts of program programs is probably the wrong word. Those sorts of software tend to be extremely complicated. Same with debugging tools, in my experience. And uh, yeah, I kind of gave up on them uh, after a while. Uh, Joe says PHPCS is a pain setup for sure, but it's worth spending the time to get it working though. 
Yep. Um, if I could get it working, it would be worth the time. But if you can't get it working, it's definitely not worth the time. Um, but maybe I'll give it another go at some point and see if we can get it going. Um, after FileZilla, I've got Git Tower. So we use um, GitHub.com to host all our projects code on. Each uh, site usually has a repository uh, and so on. So to interact with that, I, I am not by any means a command line person. I do use the command line for some things, um, but I don't use the command line if I can, uh, sorry, I don't use command line if I can avoid it. And I use um, a Git tower, which is essentially a GUI for Git uh, to manage my GitHub commits and things like that. So that's um, something I really use. Really easy to use, kind of drag and drop, easy to understand, easy to set up things like Git flow, which we use for our products where you have like your feature branches, release branches, etc. cetera. Um, that's definitely something that is worth looking at. So Git Tower, really good, um, good program to use. Um, Joseph just says, sorry, not the description. You can add WordPress stubs to the IntelliSense through the settings. Perfect. That makes more sense. Um, ben says, um, I also think WordPress coding standards don't work on PHP 8.1 at the moment. That's a good point. Um, we should be probably using PHP 8.1. I think um, I'm still using 8.0 something uh, on most projects, but um, we'll certainly be moving to 8.1 as soon as is feasibly allowed. Um, so, yeah, it's probably a problem if they don't work on the, the latest and greatest. Uh, three to go, you'd be pleased to hear. And the, the next one is uh, a service called Deploy HQ, which is really good for deploying Git projects to the server. So what you can do is you can set up Deploy HQ to connect to your Git repository. And every time you commit to a specific branch, you can tell Deploy HQ to push that to a specific server or multiple servers, as it may well be. Um, I've used this for years. I remember doing a talk on this back in, I think it's 2015. It has been an excellent piece of software um, that I've used for a long, long time. It still doesn't let me down today. Um, it's dead easy to set up. You don't need any sort of command line knowledge. You don't need any sort of technical coding knowledge. Um, it's just all dead straightforward. It connects to your server by SFTP or even FTP. To, to, to push the code to your actual server. And it's it's super, super useful. Most of our projects are set up using Deploy HQ. And it means once set up, we don't need to interact with the server. We don't need to do any of that sort of stuff. We just push commits through Git Tower and they automatically get pushed to the server at the right place, um, which is great. Um, alongside that, we use SpinUp WP, which is a product from the digital um, digi delicious brains, get it right. Um, if they're still going, I don't know if that, that brand has gone to WP Engine when they was acquired, but that's it was certainly produced by them originally. And Spin Up WP is essentially a control panel software for your server, and it's obviously WordPress-based. So the way it works is you, um, you spin up a new server in Spin Up WP, and you can use pretty much whatever provider you want. We use DigitalOcean, but there's a whole load of them that you can use as long as they can connect to it, obviously, with the API. And then what Spin Up WP does is it installs all of the stuff that you need to run WordPress. So it'll install PHP, it'll install MySQL, it'll do all that stuff for you and get your server ready for serving WordPress websites. Um, I love it. I think it's really great. It's um, nice, good, good price. It's uh, it's certainly worth looking into if you've not had a look at it for for some sites. It is a little bit more hands on than some of your more managed WordPress providers. Um, but for what we do hosting most of the sites we host, which are our own sites, it works well. Um, and um, we, we, we've got quite a few servers on there with quite a few sites on there at the moment running through Spin Up WP. So something definitely I would recommend having a look at if you're into looking at some hosting for WordPress, um, which, to be honest, could be an entirely other, other episode um, hosting for WordPress. And then last but not least... Um, I use MAMP Pro, which is my local uh, development, um, what do you call it, um, server, if you like, that I use. So I know I know there's loads of out there. I think Keith uses Local by Flywheel, is it, I think it's called. Um, but yeah, I, I use MAMP uh, a long time. Well, I used it probably back in like 2010. I started using MAMP, the original MAMP. Uh, really easy to install. Again, no codey bits involved or anything. You just run run the command, run the, run, double click the icon, and it installs and it works. 
Um, I did move away from it for a while because it stopped working once. I think that was more because I hadn't kept it up to date and my Mac was a bit old. And um, I then moved to, I can't remember what it's called now, um, VVV, was it called? VV? I don't know what VVV stands for, but it was that. Used that for about a year and then fell out with that. It was too difficult to work with with code and you've missed a comma off here and it broke everything and it was like half an hour of debugging. So I gave up with that and went back to MAMP Pro. Um, yep, it's not let me down so far. Probably had it installed for a couple of years now and running. So uh, fingers crossed it'll keep doing that for me, which is great. So yeah, that's... Um, that's that's the sort of stuff I use on a daily basis, building WordPress sites, building the products that we have, uh, maintaining those things and so forth. Anything that I've missed out, I've probably got something. What do you use for this, Mark? Because you've completely forgotten of it. If that is the case, then I'm sorry about that. Let me know in the comments. Um, but yeah, it's um, that's the stuff I use on a daily basis. I wonder how it compares to what you use. Is it very similar? Is it very different? Be interesting to know in the comments if you uh, if you have any comments on that. It would be great. Um, so that's all for, for now. Next week is is going to be episode 54. I hope that Keith will be back for that episode so we'll be able to have a chat about something. As always, if there is anything that you would like as a topic for us to discuss so you can get involved in, then that would also be uh, great for you to let us know. You can see my Twitter handle on the screen there. It's at WPMart. You can let me know if you've got some things that you think would be worth looking into, uh, worth chatting about. Uh, stuff that's maybe a hot topic at the moment would be great let us know and as always if you've not already subscribed please subscribe to the channel please like the video hit the notification bell so that when we do do one next week you will get notified and thank you very much to everyone for joining me and we will see you all next week thank you very much Bye bye